So, dear devotees, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Welcome you all for this session. So, now we are cruising into action learning point, action learning project three. We have completed two few weeks back and uh, big thanks to all of you. I could submit the assignments in time. So the main aim of this ALP3 assignment is to enhance our understanding on how to develop a mission and vision statement with regards to our Yatra in one way and particularly with regards to our project. Because once we develop a mission and a vision statement, further going on in developing and uh, enhancing whatever we wanted to do to reach our goals will be easy. So today, my aim is to share with you what I have learned about mission and vision in our LP3 course and what we need together to do as a part of the project. The overall session will be for about 30 minutes, including question and answers. So today, the words that will be flowing in will be mission and vision. So we will keep getting these words. So once again, I, I am very honored to get this opportunity to do the service before you of teach to learn. And while learning to teach, actually I'm learning to teach in front of you through the module, through the methodology of teaching to learn. Okay, so that is an interesting thing. The, the, I like this word uh, TTL, teach to learn. It, it's making a very powerful impact on me that I can learn only when I teach. Uh, so, and teaching is a, a learning process, not giving whatever I have to others. I'm putting me in a particular position. It is making me much more receptive to the learning. So I thank GBC College for that, giving that new tool and methodology uh, for me. So in so in brief, let's go back a bit before we, we launch today our main topic, that is mission and vision. In ALP1, we formed our team. We agreed on how high-level project goals. Uh, we developed a charter. Okay? Keep right. And uh, is there anything, so anyone wants to comment on... Uh, the other things that we have done on LP one again i repeat we we formed a team we we, we defined the the project and and then we did few more things in lp one can someone quickly uh, unmute and tell if they remember Yeah, so I just, I'll just kind of revise. We decided on the overall spirit of our team should be that no hierarchy, openness, we also discussed on the schedule and participation. And we also stressed on the commitment and attitude. And we also agreed on how we are going to resolve our conflicts if, if, if they may arise. So in ALP2, what we did is that taking that project that we have decided or we are envisaging to do, what we have done is we have aligned or see the alignment of the project goals with the seven purposes of ISCON. That is one of the main done. And then we also saw on what is the reason for our existence and we have agreed on that and probably that will, that will flow into our today's conversation when we talk about mission and vision also reason for our own existence and then and then we discussed about the teamwork and we discussed about the values again what we what we have to inherit and invite and we discussed about the deliverables Oh, so we, we, we pray to Srila Prabhupada on, uh, to ensure that we are on track, his blessings are there, 
and some of you have also contributed what are the typical what are these sample quotes that Srila Prabhupada gave or con in conversation or in purport or in letters regarding uh, some of the key elements in our of our project so that's how the uh, alp2 ended and uh, we we also summarized the the points right so are we all in agreement with that kind of a background that we have done in alp1 alp2 so it's a very systematic progression of where we have to go before we start the uh, mission and vision so today we will now get into the core of the content of this today's session that is mission and vision i will be sharing what i have learned or what i have been taught okay we are not supposed to or expected to complete the mission and vision statements today but we need to take the cues from what we discussed today and keep thinking about this uh, recording our thoughts and ideas and during the next session we can consolidate those ideas and uh, you can uh, you can uh, write in your own document what your notes and things like that you can share it before next session so we will consolidate them and then we can have one round of uh, discussion on that in the end of the session we will agree on how to proceed to complete the assignment so i have sent you a whatsapp few days back on the key points that we need to do and that we need to keep thinking on mission and vision so on sunday shivala prabhu will be calling for a meeting that going to be an hybrid meeting you can join on zoom or you can also physically come to the region school where the same subject matter of mission and vision will be discussed uh, that is at for the yatra level so we we i request all of you to participate in that very important meeting we will also opportunity to be in association with uh, all the other team members of other four projects and the advisories of the whole program and also there will be likely to be special invitees so i think that meeting should be very helpful for us to understand more about mission and vision particularly from uh, shri vala prabhu so this is what it is so again i take a pause here to repeat in alp1 the project headline charter was decided and related aspects of values conflict resolution schedules commitments and all those things were discussed alp2 we take we have taken that our project headline and mapped to the seven purposes of iscon and we mapped three purposes there and then we also documented why we exist the purpose of our existence and so on so now we should be ready to discuss on the what is mission and vision the mission and vision we have already actually discussed a bit before also and i would like you to very carefully keep meditating on this very good graphic this is going to drive our activities for for months to come so strategy formation has got certain components right can someone read the main main uh, circles muridhar prabhu realization of shila prabhu's mission key elements strategy contemplation who are we why do we exist what do we stand for what is our understanding of shila prabhu's mission and vision for iscon yeah okay have a pause prabhu uh, sumangal prabhu do you agree that we have, we have covered this before in lp1 and lp2 Uh, yeah yes prabhuji yeah, yeah. any any further thoughts radha madha madha ji are uh, you are on mute madha ji i i'm not directly asking badbal the prabhu i think he's outside so if you may not be able to uh, see it if he is able to see he can also contribute uh, 
Hare Krishna Prabhu, yes Prabhu, I think uh, we are clear and uh, I don't think there are any uh, doubts Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So here in the, in the strategy contemplation, contemplation is like a thinking, right? A thinking inward sometimes. Uh, so we, we discuss who are we, what do we exist, why do we exist and so on and so forth. And most importantly, what is your understanding of Srila Prabhupada's mission and vision for ISKCON? To some extent, we in, in the presentation also, we, we read a quote of Srila Prabhupada. Today, we are going to repeat how Srila Prabhupada has used the word mission. But from the purposes of ISKCON, if you, if you see, they're also very much linked with mission and vision. So we try to map those purposes with uh, our project goals, right? So we did attempt to do some strategic contemplation more so in uh, last ALP2. That's why we filled that document, right? So today, having done that, today now we are going to go to strategy formulation. So how do we how do we develop this strategy so that we are ready enough to go to implementation? So unless we do a, a strong strategy formulation, unless we have a good strategy in place, uh, there's no point in going jumping to implementation, right? So strategy formulation has few steps. One is the mission and vision. So the fundamental questions need to be asked. Are Sumangal Prabhu, you want to read those fundamental questions? Yeah, Prabhu. <laughs> strategy formulation. Where are we now? Where do we want to be? How do we get there? How do we measure our progress? How do we communicate the key forwards, way forward? Way forward. So where are we now means uh, there are one one realm of seeing things is, is where are we now with respect to the project? Where do you want to go with respect to the project? How do you get there to meet the deliverables of the project? How do we measure the project progress and how do we communicate as we go along. So these are some of the important components uh, that come in the in the strategic uh, management thing, uh, in, the, in the strategy formulation, sorry. So now I will go through a short presentation, which I have slightly customized from what I have seen from the GBC College original presentation. Uh, just to, one reason of my customization is also to fit in the, the time uh, that we have for the meeting. And I've taken the important uh, aspects of it. I just hold on. Oh, sorry. I think I got the wrong thing. So if you see here, you are able to see the presentation. Yes, Prabhuji, you can see. Okay. So when we are talking about mission and vision, uh, these are typically a material wo words that we get used in the corporate side also, right? How do we Krishnaize those things? How do we dovetail those words and activities that we do towards in the service of Krishna? And to so mission develop a mission statement for your project means. Sambandha. That means you're 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 trying to ask who am I, who is God, and what is my relationship, right? In the same way, it, it's a question of asking a question to yourself to establish a relationship to what I do, to what is the overall objective of the project, that's sambandha. And then develop a, the vision statement is prayojana, because the, the vision statement is actually telling us what is the Prayajana is the ultimate fruit or ultimate benefit that we are going to get or the delivery that we are going to see is the vision. So mission is the sambandha and vision is the prayajana. In, in that way we can do. And all the activities that we do, it's not mentioned here, the processes, the tools, the techniques, the methodologies that we adopt are the abhidaya. So that will help us to nourish the sambandha to realize the prayajana. So that will nourish the the, all the tools that we use that will nourish the mission statement, it enables us to remember the mission statement and then it helps us to realize the vision. So one of the key statements that we should ask is why do we exist? This is what we have discussed in the ALP2 also. What is the purpose of our existence? 
we had put down several reasons for us to exist in order to spread the movement throughout the world, in order to spread the movement in Damodadesh, in order to in order to fulfill the vision of his own Jayapataka Maharaj, who's, who felt that Gurusa community in the Middle East can be a very potential uh, target for the for bleeding and getting into Krishna consciousness and so on and so forth, right? So that's a question that we want to also ask in this. And then this is one of the quotes that we have done in our, one of our first sessions, I think. Uh, Murlidhar Prabhu, would you, would you want to read? Uh, Srila Prabhupada's mission. I am very pleased that you have taken up this mission of spreading the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. This is the wish of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that everyone you see or meet tell him about Krishna and by my command you become a guru and save this land. This was also the mission of my Guru Maharaj and it is my mission. You will perfect your life if you make it also your mission. Letter to Jagjivana, New Delhi. 1st September 1976. So it's an interesting quote of Prabhupada's mission uh, that what we understand as the Sambandha. So what is what is very unique in this? Sumangal Prabhu, can you identify what is very unique in this statement? Unique is that uh, spreading Krishna consciousness is the, uh, our purpose, everyone's purpose. Okay, good. Spreading Krishna consciousness. Thank you. Uh, Radha Madha Mataji or Mulidhar Prabhu or Bandhubhalda Prabhu, any one of you can unmute and tell anything that you can see. Very good. Here it is telling the wish of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to. Okay, very good. Everybody knows. Yeah, Mulidhar Prabhu. Uh, you, we can see the whole parampara is having the same mission and Srila Prabhupada wants to carry it and downwards also. Okay, and Bandhubhalda Prabhu? Uh, is there or? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, I am uh, reversing the car Prabhu. Please Prabhu. Uh, okay, Excuse fine. me Prabhu. No, no problem. Thanks. Take care. Drive safely Prabhu. So, uh, other thing that we should know, thanks a lot for all your inputs. All are correct. The thing that is very important for our today's session is that you see how many times Srila Prabhupada has the used the word mission. In one shot, such a short paragraph, Prabhupada has used the word mission four times. So that is a very unique thing. So normally in a para, you don't repeat the same word over and over again, right? Unless if you think, unless if you don't, unless you strongly feel for what you are speaking, you have to put that word and use the word repeatedly. Yeah, to re-emphasize. I'm very pleased that you have taken up this mission of spreading the Krishna consciousness. Like so, he will also be pleased with our mission to help Damodar Desh to do something uh, to help the Krishna consciousness movement forward, right? And it's a wish of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So devotees have to be taken care, nurtured, and this is also the mission of my Guru Maharaj. So Srila Prabhupada is not only saying that he is telling that this mission, there's a mission for his Guru Maharaj as well. So mission is coming in our parampara. And then he says, what is the advantage or the benefit of following that mission? So there's a lot of importance to mission is there, one thing. And Srila Prabhupada had a clear mission. And he's also told that he not only has, his Guru Maharaj also had a mission. So we are just following that mission in, in various degrees and forms, right? So in that way, mission statement, mission, understanding of mission is very, very important. Uh, very important for us also before we crystallize, enhance our strategy formulation with the mission and vision statement, a part of it. So the sample mission statement of BBT in North America. Uh, Radha Madha Mataji, you want to read? Yes, Prabhu. Sample BBT North American mission statement. Produce, publish and make available Srila Prabhupada teaching all over North America. 
Yeah. So this is the North American uh, BBD, Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust. So there is also slightly an interesting thing in the words if you see in their mission statement. Can someone spot it? Why? Because when we when we know a certain organization and when we read a mission statement, it is not just a simple uh, words that are that they place it. They place it with some deep thinking and value. Uh, so in our mission statement also, when we write it, that deep, deep thinking has to come in. So that's why I'm trying to do this exercise. Uh, so is there anything that very different that you are talking about? Normally, yeah. Uh, any any inputs? Murlidhar Prabhu, Sumangal Prabhu. It looks like a straightforward thing, right? But what is BBT for? Normally, when we when we remember BBT, what will we remember? Yeah. You remember? Book, yes. right? And when you remember book, and we also uh, listen so many things in Lilamta, printing books, printing books. Right? But in the current BBT mission, there's no word of printing. BBT is supposed to be a book, and book is normally associated with printing. Why? Because in this modern age, there are many methods of delivering the knowledge, right? It's a book, online, audio book, and so many methods. So they didn't use the word print. Instead of print, what they used? Produce. Produce. Uh, it, uh, Srila Prabhupada said, publish. It could be in the form of a book. It could be article. It could be YouTube thing, or it could be something else, anything else, anything, any, any medium. And what is the purpose of that? Make make Srila Prabhupada's teachings all over North America. So each statement, when when the when the thought leaders of that organization put a, a statement, there's a value for each of these words, right? So so why this is a very good thing for us to ponder. So when we when we also think about our mission statement, we need to see how it, it reflects the deep ethos of that. They could have simply said, because printing, publishing is the word, printing is the word which is there even in the seven purposes of ISKCON. But still they didn't use it, but they used the word publish, produce, publish, make. So it's a good example for us to know. So mission of GBC College, can someone read it? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hmm. To help ISKCON leaders to in imbibe Srila Prabhupada's, uh, Prabhupada's mood, mission, priorities, and to uh, train them in the vision, skills, and techniques needed to develop and expand a world-class movement. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So, so in this also, they're very clear. The, here, one thing which stands out in this mission as I unpack this is, first is to be very tightly aligned to Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission. And this is what we learn. We all learn in the Bhakti Shastri also, right? We have OBC, OBA questions are also on mood and mission and vision. And then skills and techniques needed to develop and expand world-class movement. So, so GBC College acknowledges the fact that skills and techniques are needed for the expansion of the world-class movement. If we have to make ISKCON as a world-class movement, it is world-class movement, but if we have to still maintain, expand it further more, for people at large, people who lead the movement, uh, people who are in the movement need skills and techniques. So this is what GBC College is telling us, right? Through this course also, just in the space of two ELPs and ELP3 starting, we could share, we could understand, we could discuss few of the very good skills, right? Very good techniques that we can adopt. So in the beginning of the session today, uh, in the previous preamble session, I told how what I learned in terms of facilitation. In, in other sessions, we also discussed few more techniques of how to uh, do some certain things. And in the in the beginning of the code, in the beginning of the preamble session, we also discussed about how an audio session is evaluated. It's not just we don't need to know why it's evaluated, how is it evaluated. It also helps us to know and how do we when we do an audio session or when we do a Zoom session or when we conduct any session. We, we have to remember those steps. So those are the tools and techniques that they're giving us to develop. So these are the, some of the mission statements. 
why I'm dealing with them is uh, uh, when we also do our mission statement, we can, these are the things that we need to uh, understand. So what's the vision statement? Like vision is where do we want to go? So in our case, we said in our goal, we said, you know, we wanted to enhance the devotee care, systemize many of the things which are now going very, they're, they're in a bit unstructured way. They're doing well, they're uh, doing a great job, but we want to systemize that. We want to create a database. So those, so this is where we wanted to go to see a very systemized process-based yatra that is driven by a very particular mission and a vision and that inspires. Uh, so it is your inspiration and framework for all your strategic planning. So vision is one which inspires us. Vision is the one which makes us enthused. Oh my God, we have to do this. It is not there now. I am luckily, I've been fortunate enough to be empowered to be there in this program so that I can contribute to do that and communicate what success will look like in the future. Like vision, if, if our vision will come to true, so it, it is just a, a simple matter of logging into database and wanting to know how many initiated devotees are there in uh, uh, RAK group or how many of them, of them are there wanting to have any session or something like that. So now we struggle to get that data. It is there. Or somebody is going from one yatra to another yatra. Uh, how do we facilitate his movement of his details? How does other yatra know what all is happening for him? And what kind of skills that we have in the yatra? So, so many things we are, we are trying to see, oh my God, when this happens, it will be so easy to for, for people to access the information as long as that system is maintained and properly updated. This is one of the examples. Or devotee care. When a new member comes, how does he feel? Oh my God, he feels it's such a nice uh, community here. Oh, why, why didn't I join before? They're so caring people. They're taking care of me. That process we are going to enhance. So if you think of all those things uh, about our yatra in, in future, when we want to achieve this vision, it inspires us, right? Okay, and also it gives a direction that what we need to do, okay? And it, it inspires us to do our best to put forward because we are, we are able to visualize that great feeling and a happy feeling that it will, uh, uh, what is going to ultimately result and a description of the future you are trying to create for the temple or a project or a zone. So just like the way I told a description of the future is that a systemized process oriented savers that are conducted with a proper data that is being fed and maintained in the system uh, is, is what we are env envisaging, right? So the importance to develop a vision statement of your project do we should do we see a bigger picture bigger picture is this vision is not for just one year a vision and a mission statement that we are developing is for long long term thing right even though we may have it immediate deliverables in the next nine months or slightly going beyond that it, it is that a bigger picture so what the picture that i was painting is a picture of a very uh very systemized view where uh, uh, where Sri Vala Prabhu doesn't have to ask anybody for information. For example, here, uh, since Muralidhar Prabhu is there, he is, he is very good in documentation. He sends reports to Sri Vala Prabhu every month. Sri Vala Prabhu doesn't ask. He automatically sends it. Imagine we have a similar thing for each a zones of Damadadesh where everybody sends a report to Sri Vala Prabhu. That is one state, right? One picture. Imagine instead of sending to Srivala Prabhu, they feed into the system. And imagine there are dashboards for Srivala Prabhu to quick, quick, quickly click and he knows what is happening. Currently, the system is very manual. Myself and Radha Madha Mataji are a part of the Shastrik studies. Every time we have to give a report to MI, now it's quite improved, but previously we used to struggle to get the statistics here and there. So that's a bigger picture, a very systemized view. So even Sri Vala Prabhu goes on leave or he takes up another service, the persons who are looking after, they don't have to find, you know, go here and there to get confused about the things. They just go to the system and then get the uh, detail. This is one big, big picture. And even somebody walks in into our thing, 
they know that it's it, it, it's working very very systematically in an organized manner and do do you know which road will reach your goals and objectives so this is what we are saying right what, what is the road that we need to take to reach those objectives so i'll just quick, make a quick pause here a any anything any any uh, any thoughts on this from any one of you i may i may making my point clear uh -huh. or i'm yeah probably yeah yeah probably i think i think uh, uh, it's like uh, i would like to give an example suppose we want to be a house you know or or, or, or uh, and then if you can visualize the house how it will look like there will be my uh, article hall room and there will be walls up there you know we'll sit like this you know if we if we enjoy visualize and try to enjoy that i think how to get build the house i mean there are many things required everything will fall a line to make that house a reality you know and make our job uh, uh, easier actually yeah. not only enthusiasm a lot of whatever is required to make that house actually come come in come into come to us actually very so good that's a, Thank you. Uh, Mulida Prabhu, you want to add Mulida Prabhu or Bandhabalda Prabhu? Hare Krishna Prabhu, no Prabhu. I believe yeah, what Samangal Prabhu told is a very nice point. So Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah. Nothing to add Prabhuji. Thank you. I think Radha Mata, Mata, Mataji must have gone for to attend a BB session. She is also coordinating parallelly. Yeah, there's only one point that I want to add, Prabhu, Mangal Prabhu, very good example, very practical example, very down-to-earth example. However, in the vision, there's one more one layer of that. What is that layer? When you're imagining to construct the house, your hall, altar, imagining how happy you are, how happy Gopal is, how happy your wife is, uh, when that vision of your house is, is going to manifest. Gopal will probably have a room of his own, he has his privacy, and you are, you you have a big hall where you intend to conduct programs, and devotees come and say a wonderful house, peaceful house, and your bhakti riksha members come, and that will enable you to expand your bhakti riksha preaching. New devotees also come; they see a very happy family, a kind of a center, uh, you know, within in 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 the in, in this complex wherever you're. So that happy state of realize, realization of the vision is what we need to inculcate, We need what we need to get into our heads while we do this project. So that's why I was repeatedly telling an example of information flow. This is one of the things, only one of the things I'm repeatedly telling, probably because of I'm from IT, I'm, I'm giving that example over and over again. Devotee care is another example. So vision is to know where to go, how to go, what is that ultimately, but being able to visualize in a very happy state what would be my level of happiness level of satisfaction when i go there in the case your house house is a very good example it could be example of a car or it could be example of a, a trying for a promotion or you know whatever it is that drives us actually that 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 that, that mood of happiness is, is where is a, is a trigger and particularly those these things if they are done in a context of a spiritual spirituality or in context of a service to Krishna that has got much more impact in material also it is there but it is in the service that we are doing so it, so we should all be seeing that day when that kind of a thing is there for Navadrishan by the time hopefully we also have a temple probably so all that we are doing will help to build that also right when we have all this built already when that comes we are ready to that if we don't have to create a database, we have to don't, don't have to create a list of donors, we don't have to create so many things that are already there. So that state of happiness that I am able to contribute something that will help when we get an opportunity to build a temple, right? So so that state of happiness is what we need to remember. So I'll quickly go. So vision, it presents where we want to go, easy to read and understand. Capture desired spirit and of an organization. Dynamically incomplete so people can fill the pieces. Okay. So it, it evolves also sometimes. Can be used to guide decision making. Gets people's attention. Describe preferred and meaningful future state. And this is what I told you, uh, Mangal Prabhu. Can be felt experienced. Gives people goosebumps when they hear it. So 
So I, I'm trying to explain that same thing. It's even a uh, Sumangal Prabhu's example. And it gives us a better understanding in the individual purpose. And it's a motivating force, right? This is what we wanted to see. This is what we wanted to complete. We want to accomplish. That's a motivating force. Even at the times when we feel that we are falling, we are not able to achieve. Uh, so, so this is the vision, and this is a table that I've said. This is a table actually. I didn't put the I put the table. Uh, I would humbly, humbly, humbly request all of you to start meditating on these very important statements. Purpose of being, what do we do today? Why do we exist? Should remain same or should we change? And uh, how do we use mission as a practical tool? To make decisions and but scope and then scope our priorities and actions and responsibilities. Image vision is to create an image of the future we seek to create and be happy about it. It's a long term thing. It need not be. It's it's not a short term thing. And what do we want to do to go forward? When do we want to do it? In 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 our case, we are doing it right now. How do we want to do it? We wanted to do it according to a agreed charter, agreed values. Agreed principles, aligning with Srila Prabhupada, uh, knowing the deliverables. So we are going in a very systematic way with the guidance of GBC College that is giving us. They're so kind to help us do that. And where do we want to be? We want to be in that state of mind where everything is systemized. And it lists where you see yourself from year, year from now. It inspires you to give your best. It shapes your understanding of why you are serving here. So this is a thing. Uh, I request you to meditate on this. I've already posted this, and come up with your own, your own set of points as a document, uh, based on the goals of our project that we have already agreed, and then we can consolidate in the next session uh, to go further. So the collective thing is very important. Ideally, ideally we should have uh, we should have had a in presence meeting for these kind of things it's very good to meet and you know put on the flip charts or you know drawing board and go about it uh, but uh, considering the distances and the other time constraint we cannot do it so we since with this background uh, we we will uh, we'll do individually and then we can collate our ideas so we know our goal we know what is the mission and this i will send this presentation to you because I've customized it, I can share it uh, and then go through this presentation, understand it and uh, come up with and think about that and discuss with your friends, probably mission and vision, your family members. They may also give a thought and it also gives you an opportunity to talk to them about this project and they'll also be enthused on why you are spending time. Uh, so, they, so whatever you learn, teach to learn should not stop with me. A teach to learn should continue with you to your son, daughter, wife, or even you can use the same technique in your bhakti workshops. Tell in our bhakti workshops. I mean, we are, we are we are involved in a project and we are trying to do this. We are trying to do this mission vision. So maybe they'll they'll also learn something. So teach to learn is a very continuous process. It is not that just that I am participating in ALP, in the GBC college program. I listen and I've been asked to do an assignment in TTL. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah, yes, because of the assignment, I'm doing it. That's one purpose. But not only that, I'm, I'm enjoying doing it because I'm learning while teaching. So I want you to also continue to do the same thing. And then the enthusiasm spreads and, and we get them from very good values. Maybe some people, we know Bhakti Rishwa, some there are some people who may be like a, who have experience in corporate strategy or those kind of a roles. They can easily contribute to us and we can pick those Pick their brains. So continue this journey and meditate on this. Come up and you are not alone. You you have your own family members and again your friends, uh, your Bhakti Riksha members. There's so many people will be willing and give them an opportunity to serve Srila Prabhupada, to serve uh, Damodar Desh Yatra. Uh, some of them will be very interested. For some, it may not look very interesting. It's fine. It depends on, on the nature of the person. Don't be disappointed if some people don't participate. But good thing is you try. And again, I repeat, you also try the rubric thing, the rubric thing that about the audio sessions. What are the things, how we can practice. So that's how it is. So next time when we meet, we will hopefully, we will all of us have something to share on what we think 
of our mission and vision statements to be, and it will get refined in, in one or two iterations. And we'll also show it to Shivala Prabhu. Uh, so because we have to be aligned with what he's thinking at a higher level. And then we can submit the LP3 hopefully again in time, on time. So I'll uh, any any quick comment from each of you, Prabhu, before we end the uh, class session? Starting from only Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu, it was a very interesting one, especially because of uh, Srila Prabhupada's quote started with multiple mission words uh, in the uh, in that uh, first sheet itself. Yeah. For, me, looking... for me, it's a very personal message because it is it is addressed to one of his disciples, I think by name Jagat Jivana. <laughs> it's a very interesting. Yeah, I noticed it. I noticed I wanted to say that probably, but uh... <laughs> yes, Prabhu Sumangal Prabhu, what is your thoughts on today's session? How do you want to take forward? Yeah, it, it, it's it's very nice, Prabhu. It's enlightening. I just try to give another example, Prabhu, and correct me if I'm wrong, Prabhuji. That happy you say you ended things saying that you you be happy, you know. Let's see your family member, Gopal is happy, Mataji is happy. But is it going to give happiness to you? That is very, very important, I think. Because yeah. that's how we, I come across a closed circuit, you know, circuit. There are a lot of elements in the circuit. The closing of the circuit, which uh, light the world, in a final, final way that you are happy. That's why Srila Prabhupada said that, stand and be happy, you know. Yes. Because if we are happy, we are automatically going to do it. Nobody has to tell us to do that, you know. Because happiness, everybody, everybody, every one of us is looking for, you know. Yeah. So that's why as we ended up that, other happiness is, yeah, fine. But are you happy about it? That is going to drive you actually, really, you know. So that's very nice. Thanks, <laughs> bro. Thanks for your insight. Radha Madha Mataji, quick inputs on today's session and Bandha Balde Prabhu. I really like uh, two uh, missions you showed about uh, BBT and North American BBT and GBC mission. It also started my thought process. It started the trigger of my thought process because it is so concisely they have written whatever their mission is and exactly they have put what they are wanting to work on. I really like both of the mission statements. It's very concise and very nice. Yes, correct, Madhus. Very good. Yeah, thanks. Bandhu Bandhu Prabhu? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. I liked the table. It was very interesting. A typical uh, IT person's stronghold way of putting uh, everything in uh, mm. tables. So it, it was really very nice and uh, it reminded me of uh, Bhagavad Gita in the 12th chapter. There are five shlokas, 8 to 12, in which the Lord tells about different levels of service. It yes, starts with complete surrender. And it gradually comes down. And one of the, uh, this thing is that he tells that use uh -huh. your natural capability for my uh, service. So this is, uh, I believe, a direct example of that Shloka Prabhu. And yeah, it was very nice, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. And we should also thank uh, GBC College and uh, their teachers and facilitators for giving us this wonderful opportunity for us to be together and uh, learn uh, these things. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I'll end the session here, Prabhu, and have a nice weekend. And try your best to participate in the upcoming Sunday meeting of Sri Yola Prabhu. Take care, Hare Krishna. So I'll stop the recording also, Prabhu. Hare Krishna.